boys and ghouls, put your hands together for Monster Shark Theater with Martin Monster. <laughs> Okay, yes, hi, hello, all right, thank you. My name is Martin Monster, okay, and I come to you from buried beneath the bowels of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, okay? <laughs> and I've been around this city for a long time, over 4,000 years, all right? And holy mackerel, what a year 1977 has been, all right? Okay, uh, the Bronx is burning, uh, Elvis is dead, we had a giant blackout, everybody's miserable. I love it, right? Come on. <laughs> and of course, the scariest thing about this year, movie tickets cost as much as $2.21. I mean, uh, holy mo... I mean, back in my day, you know, if you wanted to see a movie, well, you know, you didn't because they didn't, weren't invented yet. And, uh, you know, I really love it. I, I, I thank you. Okay, yes, uh, I shouldn't complain, you know, because I love movies, but I will because I'm a New Yorker, right? Okay. Uh, so it is an honor and a privilege for you to be here to see me tonight, okay, for a very special edition of Monster Shock Theater, okay, on the highest of high holy horror days, Halloween! Yeah. Okay, uh, and a very special treat here on UBC. We have a night full of scares for you, okay, both here and on our show, right after this, a very special sweeps edition of Night Owls with Jack Delroy, okay? This is my favorite night of the year, right? And my favorite time of the year. You know, forget Reggie Jackson. I'm the original Mr. October, okay? All right? Uh, so I want to say a special hello to all my gobble ghouls watching at home, okay? And then I guess uh, thank you to all these people in the room. All right, fine. Uh, so I've been hosting this show for many, many, many moons. And uh, every year we try to make it special, right? This is a special night after all, okay? This is the one night of the year where the barrier between the living and the dead is its thinnest. And maybe, if you're lucky, something may reach out and touch you, you know, okay? Uh, it's probably similar to your experience on the sixth train getting over here, you know, it's uh, very similar. <laughs> yeah, uh, too, many, uh, too many of you people on the train, okay? I, 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 I had it. But they say, you know, maybe next year if Kosh gets elected, he's going to get the Second Avenue subway running, up and running by 1985, right? So we should be good. <laughs> Uh, so we got a great show, all right? We got some of our favorite guests from the year back with some spooky surprises. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to say hello to my good friend and musical accompaniment over here on the theremin, <laughs> Lucretia. Yeah. All right, happy Halloween. How you doing, Lucretia? Fine. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you got any big plans for Halloween? You gonna go out, maybe Studio 54, dance it up a little bit? No. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, the theremin, right? I've been alive for a long time. Uh, that seems like it would take a really long time to learn how to play. Uh, like, what's the secret? Practice. Lucretia, everybody. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. Take it easy. Okay. <laughs> Once you get her going, you know, she's a ball of energy, right? Okay. All right, great. Uh, and so before we get into the rest of the show, though, I want to present the results of the Gobble Ghouls writing campaign, okay, for your picks of the best horror movies of 1977, all right? And thanks to all the ghouls who wrote in, I think they said we have over 60,000, right? 60,000 letters, right? What is it? Six? Six? Okay, there's always a whole bunch. So we got a lot of letters, so many, and uh, we counted all of them. I got all the results right here based on your picks, okay? Uh, but I looked at them, and like most of the time, you people are all wrong, okay? Uh, most of you picked that Flash Gordon ripoff Star Wars. What are you thinking, right? I mean, come on. Uh, so instead, we're going to go with Martin Monster's top four horror movies of 1977, okay? And why not three? Why not five? Because it's my show, and that's what I'm doing, okay? And just so you know, my calendar year ends tonight and starts on November 1st, so that's what we're going to do, so deal with it. So on that note, my fourth best pick for the horror movies of 1977, from November of 1976, Carrie, okay? Thanks for this one. Based on the blockbuster novel by that young author named Steve King, right, okay? And uh, they're all going to laugh at you, and you got crazy psychic powers, and you got pig's blood, and you got Vinnie Barbarino bouncing around, right, okay? <laughs> Seems like this Steve King might know a thing or two about a word or two, and we'll see if he's just a one-trick pony, okay, right? All right. All right, coming into my number three, we're going to go with Suspiria, okay? Yeah. 
Gary Argento, another young up and coming guy on the horror scene, okay, an import from Italy, all right. And uh, there's a lot of crazy colors, there's ballerinas, there's witches, super crazy, moody. My favorite musical score of the year by the group Goblin, okay? All right. My number two, we're going to go with The Hills Have Eyes, all right? You guys see that one? All right. This movie features the biggest thing that New Yorkers are afraid of, hillbillies, right? You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, so this movie was labeled depraved and obscene by many, which is probably directly what led to its massive $25 million at the box office. Nobody saw that coming. Not bad for this kid named Wes Craven. We'll see what other nightmares he's able to conjure up for us in the future, right? All right. And all right, and my number one pick from 1977 is The Sentinel, all right? You guys know this one? All right, you classier people might know this movie, right? Uh, it's creepy, supernatural, all right? And there's a couple reasons this is my number one, all right? It all takes place in New York, okay? Uh, specifically Brooklyn. It's all filmed in Brooklyn Heights. The, the house is still there on the Brooklyn Heights promenade. You want to go check it out, right? And uh, if you did see the movie, you might have noticed uh, yours ghouly, a little uh, you know, cameo appearance. In the final scene, you see, where they open up a portal to hell, uh, uh, the director, Michael Winner, who also directed Death Wish, great New York movie, uh, he went around to all the hospitals and local insane asylums and freak shows in town and found as many strange and deformed general weirdos that he could, right? Uh, so I was a shoo-in, you know? And, uh, but the movie is not to be missed, okay? It's got a cast to die for, right? Burgess Meredith, Ava Gardner, Eli Wallet, Christopher Walken, Jeff Goldblum, John Carradine, Jerry Orbach, Tom Berenger, Nana Visitor, Beverly D'Angelo. Be sure to check it out, all right? Uh, whenever I get this on TV or something, all right? Uh, so, uh, all right, now it's time to pay some homage to our corporate overlords with some messages from our sponsors. So we'll be right back with some more show for you. Okay. I know a place that's peaceful and quiet. A place where animals play. It's called a forest, but every year we start forest fires. A careless match, a cigarette, and poof, fire. So the next time you're in the forest, be extra careful, okay? <laughs> if you knew it was me, would you have listened? Why are women so happy about new Tickle antiperspirant? Is it because Tickle is the first roll-on with a big, wide ball? <laughs> Is it because Tickle comes in four fresh fragrances? <laughs> or is it because Tickle helps keep you dry all day? <laughs> Make yourself happy. Staying drier is nicer with a little Tickle. A bunch of kids looking for action. So what's doing out on the street? Is this the way we ought to use our boy power? Think about it. America's manpower begins with boy power. Let's not waste it. Be a volunteer worker with the Boy Scouts. A problem, just a toy balloon. They'll be bursting soon. They're just bound to go pop. Speedy McGreedy have created Frankenstein mouth. I want juicy burgers. We'll go to Hardy's. See, the burgers are juicy and hearty. Right, Ivan. Yeah. Hardy's job royals. Are... Let's say hello to Hardy. Hello, Hardy. Well, hello. It's Halloween time. When you buy a burger and soft drink at Hardy's, you get a coin to put in the fun machine, which gives you a Halloween prize. I got a creepy, crawly Halloween thing. I got a Halloween ring. The fun machine at participating Hardy's. Uh, thank you. Our first guest tonight uh, is both a lady and a daredevil, and one of our favorite guests. We're happy to have her here, but beware. Some of her tricks hidden up her sleeve are not always worth the price 
that you pay, right? And maybe more than you bargained for, all right? Guys and ghouls introducing the woman who marries the macabre and the mesmerizing Jin Minsky, the dancing sword swallower, okay? <laughs> Okay, yes. Uh, wow, that was fantastic, you know. I would have joined you up here, Jen, but, you know, I had switchblades for lunch, okay? Uh, all right, once again, let's give it up for Jen, all right? One more time. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Okay, uh, so now a couple of quick messages from our sponsors, but not to worry. Our journey into the unknown will resume shortly. Stay tuned. <laughs> Good evening to you, my friends. Actually, I hadn't really planned on disappearing in public again, but when I heard what they wanted me for, I couldn't say no. I'm here to tell you about the amazing new Talon Invisible Zipper. And believe me, friends, if anyone should know a good thing when they don't see it, it's me. You can install the Invisible Zipper easily with Talon's incredible new zipper foot. And when you're done, all you'll see is nothing. And if my clumsy hands can do it, anyone can do it. This is the Invisible Man saying, get the amazing new Talon Invisible Zipper. Well, goodbye for now and I won't be seeing you. At Cavendish, we make things in your life. We're there through all the moments 
at all times. several times over the years and never fails to leave the crowd speechless uh, with his unbelievable brand of magical madness. So hold on to your hats and your heads for Cardone the Magician. All right. Let's hear it. All right. All right. How are you? Okay, Cardone. Okay. Now, yeah, before we yeah. go, before we go, one second. Uh, I have a little present for you. Okay. Uh, many moons ago, I went to Castle Dracula, the real castle, and I excavated dirt from the middle of the castle, and here's a little bit just for you. Wow, for your that's great. Thank you very I'll, much for having me. I'll put this to good use tonight, okay? okay. All right, thank you. All right. What's up, everybody? We ready to have a good time? <laughs> My name is Cardone, and I have a few words of advice on how to get the most excitement out of tonight's festivities. Uh, first of all, some of the things you're seeing tonight are real. Some of the things are not real. And some of the things are a mix of the two, and you won't know the difference, and neither will I. And that's a beautiful thing, is it not? <laughs> For instance, this, that's really my arm. For real. And this is really a knife. And this? No! It's, it's not real. I'd be dead if it was. Are you okay? That was a serious reaction. You're in for a real surprise. I'm just kidding. No, my real reason for being here tonight is to teach you something simple. And that is how to take something ordinary and make it extraordinary. For instance, a paper bag. Nothing special. But if I fold it up like this and I get out a marker, <laughs> and I draw this on the bag. This is no longer a paper bag. It is now the bag of mystery. What's in the bag of mystery? Anything. What's in the bag of mystery? Severed What's in the bag of mystery? Mystery. A mystery, thank you very much, finally. A mystery is a thing. It really is a thing. And I'm going to put... Will you do me a favor, Mr. Monster? Uh, Keep your eye on the bag of mystery. Make sure nobody touches it. it. Now, the real reason for me coming out here is for me to have somebody in the front row shuffle a pack of cards. Now, one of you's probably good at it. Maybe here, maybe you, and she's like, no. <laughs> well, whoever it is, I don't care how you shuffle. This is a brand new deck. I've been shuffling them to get them a little warmed up, but you can do the bridge if you want. You could do a simple overhand. If you go anywhere in Asia, and I really mean this, anywhere, you will see this shuffle right here. And uh, if you want to get nuts, you can do the one at a time shuffle that looks like this. Yeah. It gets boring and I drop them occasionally. <laughs> it's hard to see. And then, wait, let me get one good one, right? There. Okay. Thank you. Woo. Woo. <laughs> and then if you want, you can try the Tom and Jerry shuffle that looks like that, right? Believe it or not, that one's easier than the other one. Who knows why? And if you get really crazy, you can try the most difficult one in the world. It's called the NSL. You take the cards, you split them down the middle, thread them in the back, and with one hand, do the shuffle. Thank you. Thank you. NSL stands for no social life, just so you know. So let me ask you, who's the shuffle? You know how to shuffle. You don't have to be fancy. Take them. They're kind of stiff. They're hard to shuffle, but give them a shuffle. I'll stand here and judge. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is, oh boy, you okay there? This might not work. Oh. Just so you know, most magicians don't let anybody shuffle ever. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before. 
They never go here, shuffle the cards. And there's a reason why. They usually go flying, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to hand you an open marker. It's open here, take that. And I'm going to have you pick a card. But here's the thing. I don't want to see it. Keep it hidden. And uh, whatever card you take out, I'll let you peruse through them. You can pick the one you like. The only thing I ask, kings and queens, eh, if you write your name on it, they're not going to be able to see it. But if you pick another card with a lot of white space on it, they'll be able to see it. You understand. I'm going to close my eyes. Go ahead, peruse through. Pick one you like. Don't let me see it, though. You got one? Yeah? You got it? Take it out. I don't want to see it. I'm going to come over here. Please don't let me keep it hidden. Yep, 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 yep. I really, the more I don't know, the more fun it actually is for me. I don't want to see. You don't have to get fancy on the handwriting. Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right, first give me the marker. Take the marker. Oh. <laughs> uh, you got the card? All right, make sure it's dry. And uh, I'm going to have you set it down right here. I promise I won't look. I'm going to lift this up in a second. I want everybody to see the card. When you see it, please make noise so I know you can see it. I'll show you too. I'm going to close my eyes. Can you all see the autograph? I don't know if you can yeah, see the autograph. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah, Everybody can it, see? Yeah. Yes? Okay. So I don't know what you wrote. I don't know your name. I, I don't even know what card it is. And now, now I don't know where it is. But if you give it one more little shuffle, take the thing, one more little shuffle, I really am in trouble now. Yeah, I have no idea where it is now. I'm done. That's it. Impossible. I'm going to take these cards, put them right in the box. Are you ready? Ooh, yeah. 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 All right, let's do this. Now, for me to do this, I'm going to move this table right here, and I am going to need one more thing, and that is. <laughs> I think there are spirits here. Would you please come on stage? What is your name? Sydney. Sydney, a big round of applause. <laughs> Amazing outfit, Sydney. Now, Sydney, stand right there. Um, I'm going to turn this like this. Okay. You're ready? Yeah. Yeah, you look ready. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Maestro, give me some music. Sydney, take the bag of mystery. Take the bag of mystery. Make your way right to the stage. Everybody give Sydney a big round of applause. <laughs> Slowly open the bag. Slowly. And I mean oh so slow, because I gotta tell them something. All mysteries have the same ending. I don't care if it's a movie, a murder mystery, or a magic trick. Open it up. Nice loud voice. What are you getting there? What's in there? Nothing. Look how happy. <laughs> he looks confused. You look puzzled. You're really puzzled. That kid looks mad. <laughs> nothing makes people bug out. I like nothing. If you have a cup, it's useless if it's, if it's full. Right? Oh, don't fold it up. Oh, open it up. I'm about to show you what you can do with nothing. If that's nothing, and I take 
these cards and throw them in, what do I get? Cards? No. Nothing. What is in there? Nothing. And if I throw them in, what do I get? Something. Something. That's called philosophy 101. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Here, do me a favor. Give it a tap tap. Like a pinata. Now, folks, you can have a seat now. I don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> There's a reason. I'm about to try something here that if you try this at home, you definitely will get hurt. It's going to look easy, but it's not. One card, one card. Oh, oh, you have good taste in cards. I think I got it right. I see some sort of a name. The Ace of Spades with Sydney's name on it. Cardone, you know. Uh, yeah, all right, okay. Uh, you know, I got a mystery bag too uh, at home, but uh, she couldn't make it tonight. You know, so. Okay, uh, now we got a really, really special treat for you guys, my Gastlies. One of my favorite guests here to share a little bit about his Halloween plans tonight on a very special episode of Night Owls with Jack Delroy. Please welcome our co-conspirator and fellow UBC host, Mr. Midnight himself, Jack Delroy! Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, Jack. Hey, Hello. Nice to see you here, okay. Oh, it's great to be here. It's great to be here. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Okay, listen, you missed a really great night at Studio 54. Last week, you know. How do it. you know I missed it? Well, I, well, I, was, I was on the second floor. I didn't you were on the second floor. I got I, two I, words for you. Yeah. Adrian Bobo. That's all I'm going to say. That's hey. all I'm going to say. Okay. Three weeks ago, I got two words for you. Bo, dare it. <laughs> okay. Let's finish that conversation uh, later, uh, uh, Jack. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, first, I, well, first, I got something for you. First, I, I love a good gift. A I love a present. present. Okay. <laughs> we got you a little. Let me show you a little more. Oh, wow. oh, look at that. We Very got special. You a little night owls, oh. uh, Martin, uh, I got to tell you, tonight. this is, I, you know, I drink more than just coffee in my coffee mug every day before my show. And uh, <laughs> although it's a little shallow, I feel like it's going to be perfect for me to keep on set. Uh, okay. It's a great way when you're doing interviews. As you know, you've interviewed the living, the dead, all of this in between. Absolutely. I think that. Uh, Having a little beverage, a little sauce, if you will, can always help uh, shake things up. Yeah, I, talk, I, got, I have a talk, uh, you know, uh, old positive is really hard to find, you know. It, it so, is, I understand, uh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I well, formaldehyde is a preservative. Yeah, right? you know, uh, boy, you you've think? been drinking as long as I have. You've got to find the hard stuff. Indeed. So, uh, you know, I know you've uh, been in New York a long while now, Jack, right? But you're a Chicago guy originally. Started in Chicago in the sweet suburbs, the little town called Berwyn, Illinois. That's where Jack <laughs> was raised, yes. Okay, I've heard of Chicago, but I don't know what any other words you're saying there. Uh, okay. So tell us a little bit about why New York is so much better than Chicago, okay? Well, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. One thing New York definitely has that Chicago doesn't, and that is uh, some of the best hosts of late-night television, ourselves included. Uh, New York also has a wonderful thing called Broadway, and I was on my way coming to see you tonight, walking past some of the theaters, and I... I saw there was a revival of uh, one of my favorite Broadway hits, O oh, Calcutta. They wouldn't have put that on the stage in Chicago, I tell you that much. It takes a city with the courage, the chutzpah, the cojones, if you will, of New York City, and I'm proud to now consider myself a transplant. I will say the, the battle rages on. Uh, it's an argument that comes up many times on my show, and it's something that I am uh, not afraid to step in the ring and battle toe-to-toe -to -toe on. I will still always give Chicago pizza the uh, trophy over New York pizza any day of the week. Sorry about it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Uh, uh, all right. I, I, 
Okay, I'll try to get past that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm a horror movie guy, Jack, and I know you, it's Halloween and everything, but do, do you like horror movies? Are you into any of that stuff? Uh, Who doesn't like a great horror film, right? Uh, yeah. I've had... <laughs> I've been able to sit and talk and gab with some of the greatest stars of the silver screen and those legends, you know. I think about uh, the time that I got to have Vincent Price on. He was promoting his cookbook, of course. He wasn't talking about his films at that time, but... Um, it's interesting, I guess people think because I'm from the radio or maybe because I usually talk about comedy that uh, horror isn't something near and dear to my heart, but my goodness it is, and uh, it's why it's such a pleasure always when I get to hang out with you, my dear fiend. I think that uh, your list that you gave yeah. earlier in the show was quite exceptional. Okay. I, uh, I couldn't agree more. Sentinel, uh, one that I feel like didn't get enough attention. Come on, that's what I'm saying. Year. I feel like not that's enough people saying. noticed it. Um, but I, uh, I've seen some really good stuff in recent years, and uh, I love nothing more than, you know, sitting in the dark of the movie theater, getting a little chill, getting a little uh, a scream, seeing somebody throw their popcorn in front of me, and uh, the, 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 the biggest scream that I have uttered was when I saw that incredible picture. I still can't stop thinking about it, The Exorcist. Mm, sure, I sure. think that uh, you, you all saw that. Everybody, Everybody saw it. Yeah, there was a world. <laughs> People were puking, right? I haven't eaten soup the same. Yeah. I tell you, though, <laughs> that Rosemary's Baby um, films about things taking over other people, the possession, the concept of that, it's, uh, it's fascinating, which makes me excited about tonight's show. I know that, uh, uh, you know, I, I appreciate all the support we have in, 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 in the house tonight for Night Owls, and I'm so proud of the show we've been doing for a number of years now. You've always been a great guest of the show and a great supporter, but... <laughs> I will say tonight, we are going to have something live on television in front of a national audience that has never been attempted before. There's an incredible young woman, very strong woman. She is um, she's one of the leaders in the paranormal research community, uh, Dr. June Ross Mitchell, who has rescued this incredible young woman, Lily. I, I don't know if you've read the book yet. She just has this incredible new book that's uh, New York Times on its way to the bestseller list. It's called. I don't really read. Okay, okay. It's called <laughs> Conversations with the Devil. So Dr. Mitchell is bringing this young woman, Lily, on the show tonight, on Halloween night. And we may or may not be trying to make contact with the demon which Lily claims lives inside of her. <laughs> Talk about must see television. You can't miss that. All right, I might actually watch it now. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. All right, well, thanks for making some time for us uh, tonight, Jack. I oh. mean, I, I know you got a lot going on, and uh, but we're all going to be here, and we're going to watch the Well, I know it's your favorite holiday. All, of all time. I mean, it is I mean, the best day on. of the year. Come on, it's not, it's not a holiday. I mean, it's, it's everything. It's You're right. life. You're right. You know? It's transcendent. It's sacred day. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, it's so great to be here with all of you tonight. I'm so excited, and thanks again for having me on the show. It's always an honor to be here with you. I think you the you really the, the, the ghost with the most, the host with the most, however you want to throw it and say it, I think that horror hosts have just not gotten their due. And going all the way back to the legends, one of my very first crushes when I was a little boy watching Vampyra, when she used to pop up on TV. The original. Utter that scream, am I right? Do we remember that scream? The original. I wished, dreamed, and hoped I could make someone scream like that in my life, and it just doesn't happen yet. The night is young. She got it. She got it. Uh, may I say really quick, it is Halloween night. Indeed. And I noticed that some of your incredible audience has come with some incredible costumes here. I am really impressed. I don't want to steal your stage, but for a second, may I? Oh, sure. Can we have a little improvisational Whatever moment like. here? Is that okay? Sure. I see a really fantastic costume here. I see a really great look right there. I see some... I feel like we need to reward okay. somebody in the audience who wore the best costume, and considering the theme of the evening with possession and my show that's coming up and the devil, I wanted to see if I've got any, but, oh, look at that. Ma'am, right there in the second row with the, with the devil costume, do you mind standing up for us? Would you be willing to come up here on stage for a moment? I think this is, this is the winner that I see in the theater tonight. What do you guys think? Hi. What's your name? Hi, Jill. It's great to meet you. I know that I was just gifted this incredible collectible... <laughs> mug, no offense, Martin, but when this 
<laughs> show Night Owls with Jack Delroy, which may be part of an upcoming feature film, becomes the cult sensation that we're all sure it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be. I, I want you to have this. Thank you. And I want to thank you for coming correct on this most unholy of nights. Let's give it up for Jill. That's a great costume, and that's a great costume. Holy crap! This is great. Nice to meet you, Jill. Okay, that's it. Jack Delroy, everybody. Come on. Right now is Mr. Midnight himself, all right? Okay, thank you, Jack. I mean, you know, it's great. He gave away the mug, you know. All right, so I think that's going to be about uh, it. Coming up, it's television's spookiest night in a special Halloween edition of Night Owls with Jack Delroy. Tonight, medium and psychic Christu demonstrates how he speaks to the dead. You hear these voices of the dead all the time. I guess the burning question is how the hell do you get any sleep? <laughs> Hypnotist Carmichael Haig puts the audience and yours truly in a spine-chilling trance. Then parapsychologist June Ross Mitchell introduces us to Lily, the subject of her book, Conversations with the Devil. Don't miss the television event of the year tonight on Night Owls with Jack Delroy. Coming up, it's television's spookiest night in a special Halloween edition of Night Owls with Jack Delroy.